Hi, this is Alex Gossi, owner of Magically Resin and working this year in collaboration with Craft Resin to bring you so many ways to use your craft resin that maybe you hadn't thought of or you might want to try and making it easier for you to move into trying something new. And I'm here to explore craft resin with you. I make and sell inlays in my Etsy shop that are iridescent film or dichroic film that you can embed in resin. My objective is to make resin very easy and accessible, to make gorgeous pieces without a tremendous amount of knowledge and without a whole lot of products. So here's my first tip. I had this mold that I thought I was gonna do something different with it, and I had put in some um, dusty rocks that had gold dust on them and they left such a neat impression on the mold that I decided I wanted to go ahead and do the pour with the gold dust on the mold without cleaning it because I knew it would be such an interesting effect in combination with my inlay. So I've started off by mixing my craft resin equal parts A and B by volume. There are many, many videos on craft resin explaining how to do the first part of the preparation if that is what you're interested in. This video is gonna be primarily about how to make this piece and how to use this type of inlay and also how to use crystals. Um, we have loads of good videos though, teaching you how to mix your craft resin and offering a lot of basic starter tips if that's something you're interested in as well. So my resin is mixed and I let it sit to degas. I also let it sit to warm up a little bit. I like to wait until it's about 110 to pour it. And then all I did to this was I added the iridescent glitter that I showed you earlier. That is recollections that I got from Michaels. I will link all of the things that I used in this video in the description below. And please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section. And if you have something that you'd like to us to do a tutorial about, reach out to me on Instagram. I am magically resin everywhere and craft resin absolutely loves their artists and we love seeing what you made with our tutorials. So please feel free to reach out and tag us. Now I'm adding my quartz crystals. I want the crystals to be primarily in the edge and not to really hinder the inlay from laying flat. But I also kind of want to, I don't want the inlay to actually sink all the way to the bottom and meet the bottom. I want there to be some resin between the silicone and the inlay. Um, and also I want to make sure that I don't get any bubbles. So I'm using the rocks to hold up the inlay just a bit you wouldn't have to do this, but be, I thought it would be fun to test it out. I realized at this point that I had too many rocks and that the inlay wasn't even going to sit the way that I wanted it to. And I love these little cube molds. If you watch my videos, since I bought these cube molds, I use them every pour. Um, they're great mixing cups too. They're just fantastic. So I already had one that has some stuff in it that I was wanting to finish up. And I'm going to turn this into a wine stopper top thing. And I saw those in my Etsy as well, and I thought this shape would be really fun, and it's a good size. So I'm just putting the extra crystals into this mold, and then I'm going to finish it off with extra resin, either from this pour or another one. And it turns out that I had extra pour from this one, so I was able to finish it out. And I will show the wine stopper on my Instagram if you're interested in seeing how I made that and interested in seeing the final result. So this is just me making sure the crystals go kind of clear when they go into the resin as most faceted, clear faceted things do. They, they disappear in the resin. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that it was gonna lay really flat, but that also the edge was still had plenty of crystals in it. And I'm really happy with how this turned out. It's, it's beautiful and so color shifting. So this dish um, feels so Eastery. I know it's interesting as artists, you know, we're inspired by seasons and by holidays. And that's actually a little Easter egg that I cut out that I thought originally that I might make this with Easter eggs, but I decided the inlay was so cool that I really, really wanted to see how this worked. So what I'm doing is I'm holding up one edge of the inlay and then I'm embedding the other 
so that the the air bubbles you can see them from the top and um i want the air bubbles to release so i'm going to fully embed part of the inlay and then work my way over as i'm releasing air bubbles and i got a little bit of resin over the project so you always want to be sure when you're doing something like this where you're adding an inlay there's definitely a chance of getting resin over the side of the mold and it's no problem if you're on top of a, a workstation like i am um so now all the air bubbles are gone but i want to cover the top of this with resin so i'm pushing it down and making sure that it is equally pushed down throughout the mold and that it's also covered with resin I realized at this point that I absolutely did have enough resin to go ahead and fill up the cube, which was great because I was really itching to make that design as a wine stopper to see how it looked. So I've um, gone into a time lapse and what I'm doing here, all I did is I took the resin that I had left over and I mixed in some white pinata alcohol ink and a couple of drops of silicone oil there are many videos on craft resin demonstrating this technique because it has such um, universal appeal and you can do, you can use this in so many ways. It creates clouds, it creates um, ocean foam, it can create a marbleized effect, which is what I wanted it to do today. And then I just added in some black alcohol ink. This is the bottom of the piece. So you're not really going to see this. This was mostly just, I could play with it. So I did. Um, and I like to play with and test stuff on the bottom of things when I know that it isn't actually going to matter because I'm always testing everything. So I really wanted to test out the black and white marble. Um, and I did want to add a bit of um, an opaque feeling to it. So when you turn it over, you don't actually see through the inlay. So, so I did want it to be opaque, but mostly all this other stuff that I'm doing was just me playing with it and testing it. And I think it turned out really cool. The marble on the bottom, even though you can't see it from the top, is really interesting. So that would be my next tip. Whenever you're making something and you have a space where nobody's going to see the part that you're working on, it is a great opportunity to test a new technique and there's really no downside to it. So I'm glad that I tried this and I would make an entire piece based on the marbleization of that because I liked it so much. So I'm over the moon with how this turned out. It ended up feeling incredibly Mardi Gras. Um, which I could never have known that it would. The color shift did such neat things once it was embedded. Um, it went from being, it's really purple from one direction and then really green another, and it's so Mardi Gras. So um, give me a thumbs up and comment if you like what I did, and please do subscribe. That helps us bring you more content and know the kind of things that you're interested in. And I sell a wide variety of these inlays in a bunch of different colors in my shop, in my Etsy shop. So please be sure and check that out to throw into your own projects and make it really easy to make incredibly beautiful pieces. I thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate you spending your precious time with me.